Dogs in the wild psychologically prefer to live in a den. This gives them a great deal of comfort and security, and we all need those in your home. If the dog has no place to call his own, then he will make some feeble attempts to maybe curl up under the table or on the good chair or maybe grandma's to pay. But when you give your puppy his own home, a crate, he. And I would like to stop here and suggest you buy this crate a Midwest home. Write that down. So the crate provides security plus visibility and ventilation, just like a baby needs in a playpen. But not at all like a baby, your puppy instinctively will try to keep himself clean. This means he will try very hard not to make one of these in the same place where he sleeps, which is a good idea for everybody, not just dogs. So that when he has to go. He will try to hold it until you can take him outside of doors to whatever you want him to go on. This could be on the yard someplace or on the tree. This routine teaches to him a schedule and helps him not to make one of these inside the house where the kids maybe don't find it until Easter. A Midwest home will also help your puppy to have fewer behavior problems like oh, lots of barking or maybe chewing or. Blaming his mother for his own failure, but most of all, by providing him with a safe and secure home, he will be happier and more self-confident, which is a lot more nicer to be around than a dog who whines and complains that you don't love him anymore all the time. Look how emotionally healthy he is in there. From very early on in his puppyhood, you want your puppy to sleep and to rest inside his home. And if you do this, your puppy will, without much effort, train himself to go in there a lot. Again, for the security and the comfort, and because he will start to think of this place as his own dog room. But of number two importance, having his own room will help him not to go on the rug. And so, Midwest Homes for Pets proudly presents how to crate train your dog, or the ABCs of crate training. And to remind you, if you have a collar on your puppy, please to remove the collar from him before he goes into the crate, because there is a danger of entanglement. Letter A: Acquaint your puppy with his new home. At first, encourage your puppy to go into his home on his own. You could maybe toss in some kind of treat, like one of those jerky sticks or some kind of biscuit bone, which is a good segue to the next letter, B. Gentle, don't force him. Your puppy may be shy about the crate at first. He may go in and back out really quick, or go inside and spin around a few times and come back out. This is normal. Don't close the door at first. Just let him go in and out on his own. Once he is happy inside and is not afraid, put your hand over the door and make him stay inside a few minutes. Slowly. Increase the amount of time he stays inside, and be sure all the while to tell him that he is being a good boy, isn't he? Because, as we all know, the one who praises you is the one you want to make proud of you. Once he is comfortable inside like this, probably in a few hours, but it could be days, you are ready for letter C. Closing the door again. Once the dog is comfortable, instead of using your hand, you restrain him at the door with the door. Again, telling him all the time what a good boy he is, isn't he? Slowly move further and further away from him, always praising, and eventually your puppy will sit quietly and sleep inside with the door closed. Which leads us to D, directing his elimination. You should know that little puppies need to go about every two to four hours, on some kind of regular schedule, like oh, after you feed him is good, before bedtime, first thing in the morning. Let your puppy out, teach him the route to the door, praise him at the door, and take him out to that part of the yard you want him to use. Very quickly, you are teaching to him an elimination schedule that will stay with him for the rest of his life. 
As your puppy gets older, four to six months, you can gradually leave him in his home for longer amounts of time because he will be able to hold it longer. Soon, he can be home, in his home, all day if necessary, until someone gets home to let him go outside and maybe pee on the neighbor dog. A great many Midwest homes include an ingenious device called the Midwest Divider Panel, which begs the question, what is this thing here? Very simply, without a divider panel, your puppy's home might be too big for him at first. This means that if it is too big, he may make one of these at one end of the crate and go over to the other end to sleep, or to chew, or to look cute, you know. The divider panel was invented to solve this problem. By adjusting this space as your puppy grows, you can purchase the correct size home for your grown dog, but still control the size for your puppy as he grows. You see? Simply insert the divider panel, giving your puppy enough room to spin around and to lay down, and happy amazement, nature will do the rest. Because he wants to keep himself clean, he will let you know he has to go out rather than going where he can't get away from it. As your puppy gets bigger, you can move the divider panel back until eventual when you don't need it anymore. Which is a good time to tell you that if you have any problems of house breaking or crate training, please feel free to call us at our customer service helpline 800-428-8560. Or, of course, you can go online to midwesthomesforpets.com. Or you could simply put your head out the front door and say in a loud voice that you don't know what you are doing. No one from Midwest will come, but your neighbors might find this amusing, and from the look of them, they could use a good laugh. The four crate training do's. 1. Do get your puppy used to his new home gradually. 2. Do put soft, washable bedding in the home that is comfortable and warm. Make the inside of the home as cozy and comfy as you can. Also, wash the bedding regularly to keep it clean and free of fleas. 3. Do supervise your puppy every time he is loose in your home. This supervision is what gives you the power to direct the dog's behavior. With this power, you can stop him from chewing things, eliminate accidental elimination, stop excess barking, and prevent all sorts of crimes from happening on the carpeting. Plus, if you don't use this power, he will begin to direct his own behavior, and before you know it, there's dog poop on your secret identity clothes. Lastly, number four, and pay attention because this is important, do buy a Midwest home large enough for your dog when he is grows up. Remember, if the crate is too big when your puppy is small, he may go in one corner and sleep in the other. So, if your home does not have a Midwest divider panel and you think you need one, you should probably get one. The 5 Crate Training Don'ts 1. Don't leave your very young puppy in his home all day. At 6 weeks, a puppy can hold his bladder for about 4 hours. By 8 weeks, 5 hours. By 12 weeks, 6 hours. And by 5 or 6 months, a puppy should be able to hold it for an 8-hour workday. 2. Don't force your new puppy into his home the first time. Plan on taking a lot of quality time with him the first few days to get him acquainted with his new home. 3. Don't put housebreaking pads or newspaper in your puppy's home. We are trying to take advantage of the puppy's natural instinct not to go in there. 4. Don't let your new puppy roam through your house unsupervised. Keep an eye on him so that when he starts to sniff and go in a circle, which means he is about to go, you can quickly and gently help him to the door and to outside. And finally, number five, don't punish your puppy by forcing him into his home. Your puppy's home should be his secure place, and you don't want that he should associate it with fear or punishment or anything negative. We hope you have enjoyed these crate training instructions, and from all of us at Midwest Homes for Pets, we wish you 
and your dog clean floors and a lifetime of fur and happiness together.